Nev, is this your client? Uh, it is my client. Heidi, if you can hear, can you please turn the video and the sound on? Thank you. 37th Circuit Court is now in session with the Honorable Brian K. Kirkham presiding, calling case 2009-4017-DS, Heidi Melville versus Earl Batterson. Today is Monday, August 26, 2024 at 10.16 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. McNiff on behalf of the plaintiff, Ms. Henderson on behalf of the defendant. This matter is before the court on the defendant's motion to modify the ex parte order, set specific parenting times, schedule, and other relief. Ms. Henderson. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, since the filing of the motion, Ms. McNiff uh, and myself were able to reach at least a partial agreement that I would like to put on the record. Okay, uh, go ahead. For, first of all, I think for judicial economy, we both agree to consolidate the cases under the present caption. The cases involve two different children of the same parties, so it would make sense to put them under the same caption if the court agrees. And those would be cases number 2011-3613-DS and 2009-4017-DS, and that's the present case um, involving the older child of the parties. Okay. Uh, I have no problem. I had my notes that we would consolidate. Why are you not consolidating them in the first case as opposed to consolidating the second case? Uh, well, I think the first case is 2009, and that's the case um, that we're presently on. It, it, that's is, the older case, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so that's... I, I was thinking we would what? consolidate both under this case number since it's the it's older case. Oh, We've got staff checking. They think that they, they, they've been consolidated already. So last time I checked, they weren't, Your Honor, but if they are, great. Um, I think that's part of our agreement. Okay, okay. go um, ahead. Second, go ahead. both parties agree to not consume any alcohol during their respective parenting times and for both parties not to smoke marijuana or tobacco inside the home during the parenting time. I think that's another agreement that we have. Um, third, counseling for the boys. I think we agree that both boys do need counseling given the issues outlined. I think as of a couple minutes ago, we do not have an agreement as to who would pay for the counseling. Uh, it would be my understanding that the parties would split any uninsured expense for that counseling, but we would leave the court to decide that. I think Ms. McNiff is wanting my client to pay for that counseling. Yeah, the, okay. issue, the issue is that, that my, my client's uh, husband just recently qualified for Medicare. And so he does not have any insurance through his employer, employer for the, the children. My client is self-employed and also doesn't have any insurance. So they, they just lost the insurance because of his age. Uh, so there is no insurance to pay for this counseling. My client is asking that if Mr. Batterson wants to have reunification counseling, that he be responsible for making that payment. Ms. Henderson, does your client have insurance? Uh, Mr. Batterson, can you unmute and let me know if you have insurance? Not at this present time. I've been uh, asking my employer for the um, information and they have not given it to me yet. Okay. Go ahead, Ms. Henderson. Um, so, Your Honor, I, I think the counseling we both agreed on is for individual counseling for each of the boys. Um, if reunification counseling is indicated, we absolutely would like to participate in that as well. Um, and that brings us to the issues that are still in dispute, Your Honor. Uh, the ex parte ordered um, that my client's contact with the children be supervised, but there was no specific parameters as to the supervision who is the supervisor, how often that parenting time occurs. So uh, effectively, my client has been deprived of his parenting time. And we are asking for the court to set some sort of parameter for that supervision and then send the issue of parenting time to the evidentiary hearing. The parties have an evidentiary hearing scheduled on September 4th for half day, and that's on the issue of child support. We would ask for the issue of specific parenting time as well as the supervision be added to the agenda for that hearing. Um, the statute allows either party to request specific parenting time. My client has never had any specific parenting time, but we outlined that he saw the boys on a regular basis and he is uh, uh, effectively requesting standard parenting time, alternating weekends, half the summer, half the holidays, half the breaks. 
Um, if the court is not willing to order that um, today, we would ask that the issue be sent to the evidentiary hearing. And pending that hearing, give my client some uh, way of seeing the boys. Um, we still have about 10 days until that hearing occurs. And so far, the parties have not been very successful in agreeing on a supervisor, somebody neutral, who would be able to provide supervision for those parenting times, as well as when the boys would be seeing their father. Uh, further, there's an issue of um, my client being blocked on the boys' phones. The boys are 13 and 15. They have their own cell phones and uh, Miss uh, Melville or Lang has blocked my client on their phones. I've asked for uh, her to unblock my client's number on the boys' phones and through Miss McNiff, uh, Miss Lang is not willing to do that. So I'm asking that uh, the court issue an order uh, prohibiting blocking of either parent on the boys' phones and leaving at least the channel of communication open. If they don't want to respond, they don't have to, but uh, either parent has to be able to reach to the children on their respective phones. Um, we're asking for any other um, issues to be sent to the evidentiary hearing. Another issue that Ms. McNiff and myself spoke about is communication of the parties. They have not been very successful in communicating with each other. They frequently block each other on their respective devices. So I suggested that they use App Close for communicating. Uh, I think Ms. McNiff is uh, a, pro a proponent of Our Family Wizard. My client is asking for App Close simply because it's a free version of similar app um, for communicating, communicating with the mother of his children uh, to make sure that both of them are on the same page. So Your Honor, we're asking for some sort of temporary parenting time pending the evidentiary hearing and then the remainder of the parenting time related issues to be uh, brought up at the evidentiary hearing on September 4th. We're asking for app close to be used and um, for the agreement of the parties to be incorporated in the order. Thank you. And Ms. Henderson, is, I take it that from what you said, that evidentiary hearing is a referee hearing? No, it's with you, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Didn't know that. Okay. Ms. McNiff, uh, your response. Um, Your Honor, first of all, I, I, I'm simply not able to get ready for parenting time hearing by September 4th. I would prefer that that be set out a little bit farther to give me some additional time to prepare and to ensure that we have all the witnesses that we, we may need in order to do that uh, on that kind of short notice. I don't know that I can have the witnesses that are needed and the witnesses that I, I'm going to need uh, are, are going to be doctors, uh, as we've alleged the the uh, child. The, Party's child has been suicidal, was taken to the hospital as the result of being suicidal. I would like to have uh, that information. I think it, probably some initial information from counselors would be a good idea. One of the children has been sp speaking with a counselor from some point who goes to the school, uh, which could could be helpful. Um, but I, I, I think we need a little bit more professional uh, input here. The, the the children did have parenting time with their father in the presence of my client. She was trying to facilitate some parenting time, even though uh, it needed to be supervised. And it didn't go well. Uh, it, it, Mr. Batterson threw a bag of cereal at Malachi during that visit. And when, when asked why he did that, he said, because I can. He told my client to shut your fucking dick liquor in front of the children. He called her a fucking cunt several times. He told her that she's going to go to jail. She called. He's called the kids fucking retards and bastards. He flipped her off several times and said, fuck you, using both fingers inappropriately. It was a disaster. He was, he was absolutely out of control and inappropriate. Um, he mm -hmm. began to actually physically get into it with the party's child, Malachi. They began, began pushing each other. Uh, which again is completely inappropriate. Mr. Batterson has bought Malachi four different THC vape pens, which we believe contributed to his su suicidal ideation. We, we think that this is an absolutely toxic, volatile relationship. It's not healthy for the children. When the child went to the hospital because he was suicidal, 
a safety plan was put into place by the hospital that indicated that she he shouldn't have contact with dad because dad is triggering those su suicidal feelings. Uh, it, it, currently, there's a CPS investigation underway, and there's been a police report made to the police due to the provision of the illegal substance to a minor. Uh, the the CPS it, CPS has indicated that for now mom should be going by the hospital safety plan. CPS hasn't had an opportunity to, to yet to interview the parents and to provide their own safety plan or to evaluate the case. So we're currently asking right now that there be, it, it, with regard to the phones, mom has blocked them on my advice. And the reason for that was because Mr. Batter, Batterson was contacting Malachi by phone through Snapchat in order to make arrangements to provision him with the, the THC cartridges. So we don't believe that having that open line of communication is safe for the children. We believe that he berates them, that he's inappropriate with them on the phone. My, my client has indicated that Mr. Batterson can call her phone to talk to the children so that those, those conversations can be supervised and that some civility can be maintained between him and the children. And we believe that that, that is an appropriate way for him to communicate at this time with the children. So for now, we are asking that there not be any parenting time or any contact until we can get a handle on what's going on. We can get these kids into some counseling and we can have an evidentiary hearing on this matter. This is a serious matter. We can't have parents providing THC to, to, a fit, to 15 year olds. And we certainly can't have this kind of language and, and, and physicality between a, a minor child and a parent. Okay, thank you. Ms. Henderson, anything else? Yes, Your Honor. So I had had a chance to discuss this matter with Carla Titus, who is the assigned CPS investigator. She has, in fact, had an opportunity to interview both children and the parents at this time. Um, she recommends counseling. She did not make any recommendation regarding suspension of parenting time. In fact, she stated CPS can no longer make those recommendations regarding parenting time. So there is no recommendation for no contact with my client whatsoever. And in fact, Ms. Titus would be testifying at the hearing um, regarding her findings in this matter. Um, as to the supervision, um, this is exactly why we're asking for the court, if the court is not willing to remove that supervision without an evidentiary hearing, to assign a neutral supervisor. It's inappropriate for the other parent to supervise parenting time. Miss Lang was five feet away from my client during that parenting time, recording that parenting time, uh, talking to him and the children, interjecting herself in that parenting time, which is inappropriate. I was not there. I cannot uh, state to whether my client said the things that he did say or not, but I can understand that that reaction would be triggered by Miss Ling interjecting herself in the parenting time and essentially uh, preventing for the meaningful contact to occur between the boys and their father. So your honor, if the court wishes to continue that supervision, we would ask that it be determined who is the neutral supervisor suitable for this until uh, that hearing, uh, evidentiary hearing can address the supervision at this time. Um, your honor, we would ask for the hearing to be at least um, commenced on September 4th. I don't anticipate we will be done in one half day, but we're asking for that issue to at least start getting addressed. My client has not effectively had parenting time for a month, and he would like to have some specific visitation with his boys pending that evidentiary hearing, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Ms. Henderson, I'll take issue with your stating uh, that his responses, his language, and his action is anywhere, uh, I guess you'd say, reasonable. And just because she happens to interject herself in the conversation, uh, it's reprehensible that he would act in that particular way, regardless of what uh, opposition he's getting from her. Court will consolidate the cases, say that the parties would not consume any alcohol or smoke anything, in the presence of the children, the court will order that the children would participate in counseling. I'll leave it up to the two attorneys to arrange a counselor in order that the parties would divide the cost of the counseling 50-50 uh, uh, for the boys. The court would uh, 
state in this matter that, as I heard today, there's, of course, even more uh, convinced that there's a reason for supervision in this matter. As a result, the court will allow the defendant to have supervised parenting time for one hour per week as supervised by Family Children Services until such time as an evidentiary hearing is held. The court will adjourn that evidentiary hearing for September 4th. I don't think that we're going to accomplish much as uh, Ms. McNiff states. We are going to have to have a lot more in the way of uh, evidence presented with the issues that are brought up in this motion. The court will order that the parties would communicate if they're going to communicate, which I have a question as to whether they're going to be able to, but if they do, that they would communicate through the app close app in this matter. I'll ask uh, Ms. Henderson that you would prepare that order, submit under seven day notice. Thank you, Your Honor. Just to clarify, uh, the parenting time will be commenced on September 4th or will that hearing be adjourned altogether? That hearing is going to be adjourned completely. Okay. And uh, I'll leave it up to the attorneys to set the matter uh, for the supervised parenting time with family children services as to when they're available and have time. But it'll be uh, one, one hour per week uh, through uh, family children services. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Thank there you go. Have a good day. Thank you. Do you want me to hang in here? Yes. Yeah.